very sad when the other person starts to disintegrate and you're trying harder and harder and you know nothing about narcissism the sinful human nature and how it will just destroy you psychologically and physically if you stay around long enough by means of human nature. The human nature will, for those that are at the mercy of it, destroy everyone and everything involved. But it doesn't do that at first, it's very clever. It's like a pedophile. A pedophile will play with the kid, be a friend of the kid, fantasize with the kid. The kid trusts this person, and then all of a sudden, the pedophile corrupts, intrudes, violates the child. That's why they lock them up. It's very deceptive, very calculated, and very harmful. Well, on an adult level, this is what a lot of people do. They come into a relationship, they get intimate, they like the person, there's every possibility of the relationship going well. They want things to work. They do all the right things at the start, everyone's going along fine. Oh, all the family members love the new person, but they know what the person's like that you're with. They know that this person's going to fail you because they know how unresolved works with this person, the trouble that they've caused, the judgments that they have, the lack of discernment that they have, the inability to fix things, the laziness that they have psychologically, the addictions that they have, the character flaws that they have, the relationships that they've had, how they've jumped in and then backed out you're not aware of all this and the family members welcome you and they're just sitting there waiting for it to all cave in the next thing you're starting to see that there's a golden child and the golden child's objecting to who you are they're complaining to the parent behind your back that you're taking their attention away her attention or his attention away from the golden child. And there's a war going on behind the scenes and you're apparently the cause of it all. You're trying to live a normal, healthy, active life. You've played it hard. You've just done the right thing. You're not rich, but you've done well. These people are envious of that. They've lost everything through bad choices, probably greed, ignorance and naivety. And now they've got scorn, praise on the one hand, but scorn covertly underneath it all. Come on, mate, quick. And it's all hidden under the mask, behind the curtain. So you're going along, you're doing the right thing, you're entertaining this person, you're there for the person, you're supporting this person, listening, and they're supporting you as well. But underneath it all, it's not going to end well because these people don't know how to end things well. Um, it just doesn't work that way for them. And the funny part about it is a lot of these people will have had very long relationships, but they've been worked out of convenience. 
not out of communication and all the things that matter. Just convenience. And as the convenience becomes a monotony, because you'll get people that want to drink and they find someone that will tolerate it, might be a nicotine smoker or somebody with a codependent addictive type personality themselves so they'll give credence to the addiction of the drinker and the, the drinker will give credence to the person and whatever their habits is it could be dope they're working together usually and of course the fad wears off one person gets sick of the other person's habit and they begin to pick on each other and the relationship disintegrates from there they end up with their habits they end up with their children and everyone goes their separate way you see people have habits that they form and that they value. And if you challenge these things vocally or just by way of your lifestyle, this will cause um, a disruption. And people will defend, even if you're in a relationship with them, they will defend in their psyche the habits that they have. They're not going to want you to disrupt what they like. And so it's up to you, right, to protect yourself and to have boundaries and to know what's good for you, who's good for you, and what's not, and who's not. And when you meet these people, you've got to look past the beauty. And that's where beauty as a curse comes in. You've got to look past their charisma and the mask and their external appearances and understand that there's a whole world of deceit and nastiness that can be going on underneath the surface. And these people will try and entrain you. They'll try and condition you to tolerate their inadequacies. The inadequacies that they've learned to value. The inadequacies that have undermined them for decades and that other people have put up with before you come along. So consequentially, these people, they're wasting your life. That's all they're doing. They're using you as supply, and this is where all the personality traits and things like this come in. But really, at the end of the day, it's just a sinful nature at work in the life of that person. And you're on the end of it. So it's going to be a matter of you being able to recognize it, and a lot of people can't recognize it. They don't know. They don't understand, they don't realize that these forces are at work against them. And that the person that's misbehaving and acting like a fool and all the rest of it isn't aware either. And this is why their life is the way it is. And after a while, you get tired of walking away from people. You get tired of putting yourself in situations where things don't go right. And you begin to adjust fast. You begin to learn fast that this person's not gonna be good for you, that this person is going to eventually harm you psychologically and waste your time. You try and get resolve. You realize there's not gonna be resolve. And sadly, you come to the point where you decide that you have to walk away.